Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. We're going to pick up talking about the, the Zoe life of God. Uh, last week we did start on this subject, but because of the directions we went in, I want to come back and really cover how we, we were going to cover it um, and uh, so forth. So understand that when we were born again with the, the life of God, the Zoe of God entered into us. <clears throat> and but but it is up to us whether or not that life functions and operates and flows out of us. And if you don't walk in accordance with God's pr laws and God's plans and the way God ordained things, it won't function in you or flow out of you. And so um, we did talk about how that God loved the world and he gave his son and that, that the father had Zoe in himself and that he gave it to us. Um, and the word Zoe comes from the, is, is the Greek word meaning, is one of the Greek words translated life. There is bios, which means um, um, manner of life. Um, there's like three words, so bios, Zoe, something else, manner of life, biological life, and then Zoe life, the life of God, the life that God has in himself, the life that he gave to his son to have in himself, etc. <clears throat> Talked about how that God created everything from that life so that everything that was in original creation had life in it. In other words, it was created out of life. Therefore, it, it rep so even, even the nature itself was a representation of life. The fall calls all that to be disrupted. The fall calls uh, death to enter in. Talked about how that death is not the cessation of existence, but separation of God. Uh, Romans 6.23 says, that, you know, the, um, we'll look over there. We'll go ahead and just kind of jump in there. So we're going to pick up God has produced life in us, but th then there is the things God gave us that life because of the separation of man. Um, Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, Zoe, through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is an eternal life because it's an everlasting, it's, it's, it is life that has no beginning or end because God has no beginning or end. God's life exists because God does, because God is life. Um, death is separation from, separation. Physical death is separation of the human spirit from the physical body. Spiritual death is separation of the human spirit from God. Eternal death is the eternal separation of the human spirit from God. Okay? We, we've used that term and defined that term numerous times in the past. Um, your, the reward for disobedience to God in the garden was separation from God. Adam committed high treason. He, he experienced spiritual death and was separated from God. Amen? Amen? Okay. Um, you cannot expect to receive the blessings of God without paying the price of obedience. Wow. There you go. It's amazing. Just bring in Dr. Maximus just for a few minutes, and there we go. Hallelujah. Um, just like you need money to purchase goods and services, you need obedience to obtain goods and services from heaven. Obedience to the things of God. If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. That, that, listen, so well, that's the Old Testament, and that, you know, some people kind of had this idea that when you get into the New Testament, the obedience, you know, and willingness are no longer valid uh, applications of the believer's life. We just live under grace and we get it because we're believers. Well, that's, that's not true. We've covered that enough over the past couple of years. You should have by now figured that out. There is the requirement of obedience to the things of God. Even the New Testament says, obey those with the rule over you. Everybody say obey. Now, this is not that crazy, you know, church thing where men come in and say, women, you got to submit, you got to obey. Some guy that, that kind of liked one of my daughters um, told her that he couldn't, he, couldn't, he couldn't go any further. She didn't even know. He, he, he hit in mind, in his mind, he was starting a relationship, and she was like, what are you talking about? Well, I can't go any further with you because you don't submit. Well, she ain't married. She ain't going to submit. And I tell you what, I have to do, I'll fly out there. She don't have to submit to him, you know. Now, I'm talking about that weird stuff. Everybody say that weird stuff. Biblical submission is totally different than what people propagate, okay? Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just not what people try to say that it is. Women got, in other words, you got to do exactly what I say, dude. That's not it. Sin reduces you to a mere man. Remember the Bible, uh, Paul wrote, and, and it's in, I believe, the Amplified Bible. It, uh, when he's talking about the schisms and divisions among you and so forth. And he says this, and he says, and um, called them mere men. Amplified uses the term mere men. 
They've been reduced to acting like mere men, acting like unsaved, unregenerated men. E.W. Kenyon says that a man does not uh, renew his mind to the Word of God will imitate a sinner or act like a mere man. Um, actually, I think, I, I, I believe Amplified goes on and says it this way, mere unsaved or unspiritual men. Um, we, need, we need to reflect the life in us. Can you say amen to that? Amen. All right. Now, one way we do that is we do the hokey pokey on Wednesday nights. Anybody, anybody want to do the hokey pokey? Not really? Okay. Um, the reason sin reduces you to a mere man is it separates you from the life of God. Sin is a separator. Everybody say sin is a separator. You cannot live a supernatural life when disconnected from the life of God. Sin is, is an inhibitor. It blocks, it blocks the flow of the life of God through your life. Now let me say this. You don't, um, once you're born again, you don't exist outside of a relationship with God in that, that, that state. <clears throat> You walk out of that state and you separate it from that state. In other words, you can do Adam did not commit high treason. You can rebel against God and lose your position with God. God, man was created to be immortal. Zoe affected man's mortal flesh and enabled him to live a long life. Uh, Adam lived over 900 years. All because, uh, really, it, had he not sinned, he would have never died. Man would God never, well, where do we put all the people on the planet? You know, uh, now they, about in the 70s, they did a thing. They said they could take everybody on the planet at the time and put them inside the city limits of Jacksonville, Florida. Now, I know we've grown exponentially since then. Maybe we've doubled since then. Maybe we went from three and a half billion to seven billion. Okay, two Jacksonville, Florida's. If you put them in a three by three square foot um, box, you could put the entire world's population in that city limits at that time. Now, I think there's plenty of room on the planet for a lot of people. Hello? Can you, imagine, can you imagine a whole city being New York City? No, I don't want to think about it. I don't, you know, we could go there. I don't think man was created to have everybody piled together in big cities either. Had Adam not sinned in the Garden of Eden, Zoe life would have stained his immortal life. He would have never died. Because see, his body at that point in creation was neither death doomed or not death doomed. It was just created as a, as a living, um, it was created to house his spirit. And it would have continued to house the Spirit without interruption had he not committed high treason and brought death. The seed of death was brought in. Okay? You can be dominated by this life. And that is what we're after. We want the believer to be dominated by the Zoe life of God. Now, understand Zoe life is redundant. But because we're using a Greek word, we want to un you understand what we're referring to. Uh, Zoe being the life of God, life of the man that God has it. it is, so to say Zoe life is, is redundant when understanding the Greek, but for purposes of continuing to clarify what we're talking about, uh, I'm, I'm going to use it that way. So you can, be, you can be dominated and should be dominated by the Zoe of God. Amen? You must stay connected to the Zoe of God. You must kill your fleshly desires daily so that the Zoe life can live or be made manifest through you. The Zoe life of God is responsible for developing you. In other words, that life. Uh, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. Remember, he says, in, in the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me. Amen. That life working in us causes us, you know, as we yield to that and walk in obedience to that and walk in harmony with that, it develops us and brings us into the things God has for us. Excuse me, my voice is a little froggy tonight for some reason. <clears throat> um, so you cure your flesh and desires so that Zoe can live or be manifest through you. It's, that life is responsible for developing you. Um, now, development requires uh, you to do certain things, resist things. You've got to resist the temptations of the flesh. You've got to resist the desires of the flesh. You've got to resist the cravings and yearnings of the flesh. Um, and let's look at 2 Corinthians 4. And reading verses 6 through 10, it says, For God had commanded the light to shine out of darkness, 
has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the, excell uh, the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. We will give God the glory. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. It's always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. And so, the life of God in you will work in you as you face different things. Understand this, in order for things, for, for you to deal with stuff, you're going to have to face stuff. Not that God sends it, it's already here. Hello? God doesn't send it, it's already here. Okay. Say it with me. God, God does, not does not send the trouble. God does not send the problem. But because it's already here, his life in us will cause us to work in resistance toward the things that are already here and cause us to grow. Now, God's not bringing, God is not putting all that stuff on you. It's there. You got to face stuff. Say, I got to face stuff. Because it's already here. You understand what I'm saying? Um, now, now that man is falling, you know, we, we have different things in the earth. Um, there's flu seasons, there's bugs, there's you know, cold viruses, there's all kinds of stuff floating around there. You're going to have to resist them. God didn't send them, they're already here now. I mean, you know, and every year, that, apparently the, the, what they call the flu virus mutates every year. Okay? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a virus from hell. Because it mutates every year. They, and they, they go out and they find all the, the virus strains they can find there, and, and, and they start taking them and creating a flu vaccine. Okay? And they have to do it every year because whatever virus was out last year mutates into something different so that your body, you know, it's just like the devil, it keeps, it keeps changing. So it can attack you again next year. We got pig flu, or also known as a swine flu, bird flu, Hong Kong flu, Spanish flu, Asian flu. I mean, you know, they, they come up, well, every year they come up with some new name for what kind of flu is coming. Hadn't heard of the Atlanta flu or the, maybe they come out of country, where do they, things come from? What country is they coming from? Some devil country. Maybe they receive their name of something like a New York flu or something. Hallelujah. But you're going to have to face that. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be sick. It just means you've got to face it when it's around and live victorious over it. Can you say amen? You're going to have to resist it. And your body, you know, this naturally your body builds up antibodies and different things that resist stuff. Now, you know, how many, how many know how flu vaccine works? You give a little bit of it in a small dose, just enough to make your body produce the antibodies and stuff to work against it and put that into your system. So when the real thing shows up in full blown, those things are already working in you to resist it. Amen? Okay? So, understand, you're going to have, you're going to resist things. Now, God's word and God's life in you already is resistant to the things that are out there in the world, but you're going to have to face them and overcome them for it to develop properly. You can't, you know, I don't know how people get this idea that, you, you know, getting saved and becoming a Christian and getting born again means you're never going to have any trouble in life. We, we preach, we, we, a lot of times in the charismatic word of faith circles, that's been preached. Now it's just packaged under grace. It's the same, some of the stuff they're saying is some of the same stuff they said 30 years ago. Okay? Some of the exact same stuff about, you know, I'm not going to have any trouble and I'm not going to face anything and I'm not going to have to deal with anything because, you know, I'm righteous. Well, your righteousness has to be developed as far as its application to daily living. All righty? So, um, he says here in verse 10 that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest <coughs> in our bodies. Not just your spirit, not just in renewing your mind. God wants you, his life manifest in your body. He can cause you to live a long life. It can cause you to live a life um, victorious over disease and calamity and injury. Live a life well and whole. Amen. All right. How many are here? All right. I, I must have raised your hand. All right. How many went home already? 
All right. Um, however, whatever you spend the most time with is going to dominate. Now, let me tell you something. Um, how many, how many um, at least understand this principle? That if you hang around with a bunch of unbelievers who drink and smoke and carouse and run around, you're not going to stay strong. You don't go to church. I don't need church. You know, you hang around with all that stuff and you never go to church. You never get fed. You're not doing anything to keep your spiritual life up. That ultimately it's going to pull you down. That's a question. Let me understand that. All right. Jesus even understood that because he would withdraw himself after ministry and after being around these people, even after he went and ate with the public and the sinners and stuff, he would withdraw himself and spend at times all night in prayer. He would withdraw himself just to be with the Father. And if you'll notice in the book of Acts, after they went out and ministered, even when they got persecuted or whatever, what did the Bible say they did? And they went to their own company. There is an imperativeness about staying with your own company. Now, let me say this. I'm going to say this with, with uh, uh, somewhat of a straightforwardness and bluntness without trying to be mean. If you think that you can say, I'm doing fine, and you won't come to church, and you won't be in church, and you can't come to church because you're ticked off with somebody in the church, and you think you can say that you're walking in love and you're forgiving and all this kind of stuff, you're deceiving yourself. And then come tell people that you're hearing from heaven. You can't hear from heaven in that state other than repent. God's not going to tell you some grandiosa thing to do in life without first telling you to repent. That went over big. It's true. You think you're tapping into the life source of God for wisdom and information, and you're just flat out walking out of love and walking in disobedience to him. It don't work that way. Because I can tell you, God will leave off where he left off when you still got in that path in the first place. Repent. And when you come back and listen to him, he's still in the middle of saying, repent. Get that thing straight. <clears throat> God doesn't operate with us. He just kind of forgets about that you go on your merry little way and then keeps giving you all the wisdom and direction and understanding and all that kind of stuff. It don't work that way. Why? Because your rebellion has cut, off, cut you off from that source ministry in your life until you get the other thing straight. Sin will shipwreck you. Why is God going to continue to bless you when you're walking in disobedience? He does it. And one, let me say this, one reason he will not continue to bless you when you're walking in disobedience is that because we're, he knows us, we'll think that's, a, that's him condoning what we're doing. We'll go straight, oh, see, I'm still being blessed. It's the Lord. Uh, we see ministries be blessed continually when they're walking in sin. And it wasn't for the minister to condone his ministry. It was because the people had a need and he wanted to meet the need. Had nothing to do with condoning their ministry. Had everything to do with he can use a donkey if he needs to. Or the other word. J-A. Okay. A jack butt. All right. God uses a, used a chicken. God used a donkey. It wasn't because, you know, when the donkey was used and the chicken was used, it wasn't because the people that they were used were doing the right thing. As a matter of fact, we go clearly from the Scripture, they were doing the wrong thing. There was not a continuation of blessing. There was an arresting to stop what they were doing. So, if you're spending the wrong time in the wrong places, and I'm going to tell you, if you think you can just stay at home and watch television and, and, and uh, and so forth, and not walk according to the Word of God, and still walk blessed, you're wrong. Okay? When sin tries to dominate, you need to die to that sin. You need to crucify that, and, and put yourself under the uh, influence of the Zoe life of God, and get things straightened out. Hello? Now, I've, I, over the years, I, we've been pastoring for a long time. And I know some people think, well, you ought to have more people if you've been pastoring for a long time. That's not my business. That's God's. I'm doing what I know to do. And I'll leave the rest of it in his hands. <clears throat> but let me say this. I've been pastoring a long time. And I have never had one single person walk in my office who was on fire with the Holy Ghost, walking in the Spirit, had no, had no 
conflicts, no, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Offense, no issues at all. Everything was great, wonderful, loved the Lord. The church loved them. They loved me. I loved them. There were no problems. In all my years, I've never heard anybody walk in my office in that state and say, you know, the Lord, Pastor, the Lord's leading me somewhere else, and, and I hate it because I love being here. I don't want but the Lord, I had to follow God, not one time. Other than I've had two people go to Bible school over the years. And in both cases, it was the right thing for him to do. Not, other than Bible school, not one time. Why? Every other time, there's been some kind of offense uh, aimed at me or somebody in the church or something in their life. And yet, during that time of having offense against somebody in the church or against me or against the church as a whole or whatever, they hear from heaven they're supposed to leave. Now let me tell you, God don't work that way. I can tell you what the problem is, it's because you're in offense. Because three months earlier when everything was just wonderful and you loved us and, 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 I, you know, and you're just loving the word and you're loving what the church is doing, when you didn't have an offense, you were here by, you, you were with us forever. It's amazing how offense changes what the Lord says. I've never, I've never seen anything else change what God says to people more than offense. Sin don't even change it that much. I'm talking about, you know, somebody being out in sin. You know, doing something, drinking, smoking, shooting up, whatever. It doesn't change the voice of the Lord as much as offense does. Never have I seen anything like offense do that. You need, to, you need to guard your heart and let the Zoe life of God dominate you. And you're going you're gonna to face stuff where people are going to offend you. Well, don't get involved in this, that sin by getting offended. And of course, then, then you get this scripture and they really get mad with you. Great peace have they that love thy law, for, in, for nothing shall offend them. That just goes ever big. And most of the time we don't like to preach that because we don't want anybody to get upset with us when they're offended. But if they're offended, there's a reason. Amen. Can I get an amen from the amen corner at the back? Amen. amen. No, pe people need to watch their hearts and guard their hearts and let Zoe dominate them. You know what? I'll guarantee you, given the opportunity to spend enough time with me, I'll say something that'll offend you. I, I just guarantee it. I'll do something that you take offense to. <clears throat> now let me say something. 99.999% of the time, I was oblivious to it because it wasn't intentional and never wasn't, you know, never intended to be offensive. And that 0.00001% of the time, I may have only been partially privy to something. Thought, well, maybe I shouldn't have said it that way. You know? And of course, the pastor's talking all the time. I don't have time to get offended at you. You don't ever say anything. Except when you walk out and say that was a horrible sermon, which nobody does. That was great, Pastor. That was awesome. That was, that was neat. That was heavenly. I'm going to another church next week. <laughs> Nobody preaches a better word than you do. I'm out of here. <laughs> the best preacher in Greensboro is Ed Taylor, but I'm not going there anymore. Yeah, I know. Offense is counterproductive to the functioning of the Zoe life in you. It'll suffocate it. And the wisdom and, and, and things you need out of that Zoe life will be choked because of it. Amen. Now, you know, we have, we have what, we basically, we do have a multicultural church, at least, at minimum, a bicultural church. But, you know, really cultures cross more than just racial lines. Think, but, but, you know, we're all, we've got different backgrounds. We've got different perspectives on things. We see things naturally, particularly naturally. Now, spiritually, we shouldn't see things, anything's different. But there's, there's natural things we see that are different. We respond to things differently 
because of our culture is we, how we brought it up. The equalizer or the, the melting pot of that is the spiritual side. Amen. Now, we used to have somebody in our church years ago, and, and um, I, I love them. I still love them. I, I, could, I could have dinner with them right now, and I have a problem with it. But they, they culturally had some, some strong, strong things they dealt with as, as an African-American growing up in, in the deep south. I mean, one, one time they were shot at by a shotgun by a bunch of redneck honkies riding down the road. They were, they were college students from one of the, they were, they were out, they were going somewhere and they were on the way back to, to school. And these, these out and back country roads of Mississippi somewhere, they just rode by and shot at them. I've never dealt with that. I've never had an African-American shoot at me. Hello? I never had somebody pull up beside me with a shotgun and put it, point at me because I'm white. So I understand we've dealt with different things. But we have to realize that each of us have come from different places and dealt with different things. And, and, and I cannot, you know, and I, and I know, I know from talking to them that there are some things about it. They, they still have, 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 they have formulated part of their personality and even their perception of spiritual matters. Okay. They came one time and told me that they were, they were uh, there to help me relate better to the African-American members of the church. But everything they kind of shared with me was all watching how I said names. Now, listen, folks, you know, um, just because I can't say, you know, a lot of the Bible names does not mean that I'm a racist when I can't pronounce, you know, some African name that, that I don't know how it's pronounced. We're going to help you, Pastor. Well, that, that's a problem because you're really, what it is, you're skewed by your culture, your cultural background. Uh, or we're going to celebrate Kwanzaa. Well, I'm sorry. Kwanzaa is a made-up holiday. And we're not going to celebrate it. You know, and it's not because I'm white. I ain't going to celebrate any honky holiday or any other kind of holiday unless we're celebrating Jesus. Amen. And we're going to celebrate Jesus. Yeah. Amen. But we, because of our, our, our diversity, we have to make sure that we guard our heart. Remember the psalmist said, you know, guard, my heart, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. What's in your heart? The Zoe life of God. We have to guard it against things getting in there and causing offense and causing issues and causing, letting the devil take little things that really don't mean anything and were never intended that way, but the devil paints them to mean something. Amen. Amen. Now, we ended up losing that family eventually, but, you know, it, it, and it was, it was just, there was so much that kept building there along those lines that I couldn't, I couldn't live up to the standard. You know, I mean, I honestly could not live up to the standard of you can't mispronounce a Bible name because you're going to tell all the African-American members that you don't care about how, uh, how they pronounce their, their African names. That's what I was told. Well, that's just, you're just, you're, you're, you're setting it up. For, and then, so you're on guard. You know, I don't want to sit down and spend four hours researching the, the pronunciation of something. We'll just, we'll just speak in tongues when we get there. Amen. What I'm saying is, and, and then, and then, you know, white people in our congregation, you, mean, you didn't grow up, because white people are stiff as a general rule. They're stiffer than a two by four. I'm just, you know, I'm just being honest with you. They don't, they, 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 they don't, they don't tell it, they always cover it over. They don't tell it like it is. And then you run into an African-American member who, they, their culture uh, that they grew up in is just to tell you straight up how it is. And you're going, I'm offended. Well, I would have never said that. We know. You know, why, where do you think where pure thing came from? It came from them stiff honkies. Hello? They could talk about anything. You go to a white church, they don't even, they don't even mention the word sex, much less talk about it. So we, we understand. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I want us to understand something. Because there has been a racial, I don't know why I'm going here, but I'm going here. There has been a racial spirit released in our nation. Now, we, honestly, racial relations did not get better under the presidency of our current president. It got worse. And you say, well, whose fault is that? The devil's. Because he has, there's been things released. People are, there's an anger. There's a resentment. There's, 
uh, in your face stuff. There's all kinds of stuff going on. And if it's going on in the world, guess what's coming next? Anybody know? Where's it coming next? If it's been taking place out there in the world, it's coming to the church. It's coming to the church. And what, what was that? It's, yeah. I couldn't hear all you said. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, I mean, this, is, listen, you gotta, this, this is why we're sharing this way. You've got to realize you can't be just sitting and stick your head in the sand like an ostrich and say, drop, get me Satan through the goalposts of life. These things are going on in the world. They're coming into the church. Hello? And we have to guard against that. As, as, as members of the body of Christ, you don't need to wake up one day and go on. <laughs> Oh man, I don't. I'll tell you what. Did you see so and start and start having these racial feelings about someone and not understanding where they're coming from? They're not coming from that. All of a sudden, you know, Pastor Ed became the Grand Imperial Wizard of the KKK. Hello, or Jeff just took up the the, the uh, leadership of the New Black Panther Party in Greensboro. <laughs> He'll have his fist up like this for black power, and I'm going to hold mine up like that, white power. <laughs> the, you know, the W? All right, anyway. <coughs> Geek power. <laughs> but <laughs> but this stuff is going on out there, and see, the church leaves, and when these things start happening, what do we do? We run away from what we know to do. And that, I don't know how I got from not walking in love to this, but it's, it's there. To where we're no longer letting Zoe life dominate us. How many remember what it was like when you first got saved, they was turned on to the Lord? You didn't care if they looked like Barney the dinosaur. They were your brother. They were your sister in the Lord. But after a period of time, if you don't continue, to, when you let little things in, you don't keep dom letting dom Zoe dominate you. The next thing you know, <clears throat> a, lot of, a lot of fleshly things are arising again. You have to keep that stuff under. And not just, I'm not, listen. Some people say that if you, if you had those feelings at all, then you're still a racist. That's just garbage. That's flesh. Hello? Your flesh has to be put under. There are things in your flesh you've got to keep under and deal with. They keep it under control with the Zoe life of God. Amen. But that, this, this thing on race, I'm telling you, we have got as the church to be an example. I mean, I just, I mean I'm talking about the body of Christ as a whole, but even our own particular church, we have to be an example. We can't take offense. You can't be sitting out there and me say something and you go, oh, Pastor Ed, I tell you what, he don't, he don't like black people because he said black instead of African American. I had a, we had a paper person, this lady came to our church in Greenville one time, <clears throat> and, our, and our assistant pastor at the time, I wasn't on staff yet, but our assistant pastor was, was African American, and he said something, and she pulled him off to the side after, because she's supposed to be some prophetess or whatever, said, you know your pastor's a racist, don't you? Because he said something a certain way. That same spirit will work, work out there without somebody telling you verbally. Amen? Amen. That spirit of work, you've got to guard your heart. Amen. And Pastor has singled me out because I'm, I'm not the same color he is. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And you ought, to, you ought to know me by now. I love everybody. Amen. I love all of you. And, you know, some of you have to spend more time than others. The others are the ones that, that left. I'm just messing. I'm just, I like spending time with all of you. You're great. You're just awesome. You're a blessing. Now, I might have things more in common with certain people, but that doesn't mean I don't love somebody else less. You all understand that? Yeah. You know? I mean, I could, you know, if Jerry's here, now me and, if, me and Jerry, if Jerry's here, we're going to talk about football. <laughs> Particularly if the Cowboys beat the Panthers. 
And I walked up to Jerry's car the other day. He, he, he's sitting out there with his little top hat on, his British rider hat on, sitting out there in his car. And I walked up to him and I said, you know, Jerry, I, I was a computer programmer, and, and I, we had this language called RP, uh, Report Program Generator. He said, yeah, yeah, I remember report, RPG. I said they had RPG, RPG2, then RPG3. I said, RPG. I said, but then you know what? What I'm really interested in is RG3. Because they, the, the quarterback for Washington, who just beat the Cowboys, they call him RG3. Yeah, he like, he, yeah, he just shook his head. And he didn't get offended. <laughs> but, I mean, if I get around Brother Bill, we can talk about computers. You know, different things, different people we can talk about. Different subject matters we can talk about. Benny, you get around Benny, he wants to talk about prayer. Benny loves to talk about praying. Amen. Just, you know, we can have different things in common. It doesn't mean that we love somebody less than or more than somebody else. We have to, what I'm, I'm truly trying to get to is we got to guard our heart against offense. Because Satan is at work. Now, I'm going to tell you, we lost, we lost a, a very valuable family in the past year because of offense. 100% solely because of our offense. And didn't, didn't like the way I handled something. We got offended at me. Offense. Hello. And in the middle of the offense, heaven spoke. You know, we, we can't we can't live that way. We can't build the kingdom living that way. And see, so you get to a certain size of the church, you can have 50 people get offended and leave, and it doesn't affect it because that 50 go off somewhere else, and the church still has 450, 500 people. You know, it's notable when you're smaller. And these things, we, so we, we have to, we want to build our kingdom, we, the church for the kingdom of God. We have to guard our hearts against things that enter in to cause trouble. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to have the opportunity, if you haven't already recently, soon to deal with something like that. Why do you know that? Because I'm preaching on it and I wasn't planning on it. <laughs> that's, just, that's a telltale sign it's coming. God's preparing you so when it shows up, you go, aha, <laughs> aha, yeah, I'm ready for you. Amen. You know, back in the, like in the old, old movies, you know, if they were sitting at a campfire at night and they heard all these animal noises all of a sudden kind of just out of the blue, it wasn't a coyote. It was an Apache or somebody getting ready to cut your head off in the movie. I don't know that all, I can't say that definitively that's how all they, the um, um, tribes were. I don't know. We have, you know, Revisionist history. <laughs> the white man wrote all the books. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All the stories. General George Armstrong Custer. He was a lieutenant colonel with a field, prom with a field promotion. Did y'all know that? Custer only had a field promotion degree. He wasn't a, he wasn't a full blown general. He was, had a field promotion. <laughs> Hallelujah. So. I'm trying to get off of this, but I can't. Get ready. Be prepared. When it shows up, deal with it. How? Out of the life of God. Let the Zoe life dominate you. Think of how what Stephen did when they were stoning him to death. He responded the same way his master did because the same life was working in him. Remember when Jesus said, uh, Father, lay not this sin to the charge? Amen. Father, forgive them for they know what they do. Then, then Stephen said when they were stoning him, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. Boy, could you, could you get offended at somebody throwing a stone at you? <laughs> Trying to kill you? Hello? All you tried to do was help them. Preach the truth to them and they got mad. That went over big. <clears throat> so... Just as Zoe is inhibited by sin, sin is dominated and inhibited by Zoe. Offense can be destroyed by the life of God in you. Amen. Now, this is when you go back to the things on love and so forth, where you say, uh, now I know the, the, the King James says love believes the best of every person. The, the, the Amplified says it better. Love is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It wants to. And I understand, you know, 
uh, once you've been burned a few times by the same person doing stuff they shouldn't be doing in your life, taking advantage of you, stealing from you, robbing you, cheating on you. I mean, you, you know, you've got a husband. He's been out with six women in the past four months, and you've taken it back every time you finally say that's enough. Oh, you've got to walk in love, sister. No. Wow. I didn't hear what he said. Fix that. <laughs> Many gonna fix that man some grits <laughs> and pour it in his lap. Hallelujah. <laughs> but she ain't gonna burn the chicken. How many, seen, how many seen the help? How many have not seen the help? You need to, see, you need to get that, rent it. It's a great movie. It's a, if you want to, see, if you want a good movie that'll make you laugh, it's it's. Many don't burn no chicken. Hallelujah. Fix that man some grits. Well, you know, at some point, you just can't keep letting him run out and run around on you and, and, and come home and you just, I'm walking in love. Well, you can love him without him out putting up with that. Amen. You don't need to put up with that. Coming home beating you. You don't, put, you, you know, oh, I believe he didn't mean to hit me. You got three teeth knocked out in a black eye? No, no, you're ever ready to believe the best of everything. You want to believe the best. Now, let me say, when it comes to your brothers and sisters in Christ, you should be ready to believe the best and not what the devil told you. Hello? And let me say something. Maybe they got spun up about something and told you something you didn't want to hear, and they offended you, and they meant every word of it. You can still walk in forgiveness towards them and love towards them because maybe they were under some, some kind of stress that you were oblivious to. Maybe they were dealing with things internally and, and in a personal way that you knew nothing about and you just caught the brunt of their fact that they hadn't dealt with it properly or dealt with it with the Word of God or they were trying, they were struggling. Listen, you don't know what people are dealing with. Yeah, but they should. Yeah, but what about laying down your rights? To be right. We have to spend more time letting Zoe life dominate us. Letting the life, the love that comes out of that life flow out of us. And being compassionate and sensitive to the other people go through stuff that I'm not going through. And they said something to you. They maybe, maybe you walked up to somebody in church one day and, and, and said something and they snapped and might have bit your head off. Hello? You walk out puffed. Hello. I mean, you're a huffing and a puffing. Who do they think they are to talk to me that way? Well, who are you that you, they can't talk to you that way? If you're a believer, the Bible says that Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the shame of the cross. They wagged at him with their tongues. They said if he's really the Son of God, good him take himself off that. They'd have called for angels. There's all kinds of things they were saying to Jesus, and he didn't. He, and then even in his trial, the Bible tells us that as a lamb before her shearer, he opened not his mouth. They smacked him. They beat him. They pulled his beard out. Yeah, he responded out of the love of God towards them because he knew that his love walk was going to redeem them. So if another person in our church offends you, and even if they deliberately offend you, maybe they were just ticked off with you. They did not like Sunshine's hot pink coat. And they let her know that they liked the Neen's purplish pink better. Fuchsia, whatever that is. And then she, Sunshine should trade her coat. And they just said, that's the ugliest coat I've ever seen. And I mean it. No, I really don't. I'm just saying that. See what you did. <laughs> I just want to see how you, what you, how, how you responded. And all I got was a... <laughs> okay. <clears throat> right. Okay, Pastor. All right. I won't be back Sunday. The white action. <laughs> The white reaction. There you go. <laughs> and what you talk about, I mean. Hallelujah. This don't come back unless you're wearing that orange coat. All right. But you know, somebody, somebody's does something that's going to offend you. And, 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 uh, and 
<clears throat> at that point, you could take it and you could run with it and you could say, you could just start. And what happens, have you ever noticed how your thoughts run so fast you can't keep up with them? I can't believe they said that. And then boom, things are going like going off in your head and just running and building and, and, and creating a scenario. What's happening? Well, what's going on in your thought life is going what? Is going to affect your heart life. You got to cut that something. Casting down imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Amen. Now, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about if you walk in here. Uh, if, if every time Montreal walked in the door, I walked back and said, uh, "I can't stand it when you come to church," and slapped her. Now, first of all, I'm not stupid enough because I know she carries a knife. <laughs> I've heard about her knife. Anyway, I'm messing with you now. <laughs> you think she's going to keep coming? Now, the first time she might go, well, oh, Pastor just must have had a bad day or something. But after the second, third, fourth time, I mean, that, that's enough. Okay, so, so she, may have been able, she may have believed the best of me or, or was willing to believe the best. Um, maybe she thought I was uh, uh, delirious and thought she was somebody else. All right? But if enough times, she's going to go, I can't keep putting up with that. And I'm not talking about the walking in love where you're letting people b abuse you and take advantage of you consistently over time, all the time. I'm talking about not letting offense in, particularly about things that aren't real. And if it only happens one time, if somebody does something to you, no, know, and you, know, you got you got to look at it and go, you know, maybe they're just having a bad day. Hello, pastor didn't pastor didn't. I mean, I got, pastor stood out there in the foyer and shook hands with everybody, and when I got right there, he turned around and walked off. He don't like me. Okay. And your feelings are hurt because I shook hands and talked with everybody. Hello, carried on a conversation. You're standing back there waiting. And what you didn't realize was um, that there was something pressing that I had to take care of immediately that I just remembered or something. Sometimes that happens. I'm out there and I go, oh, man, I got to do this. I got to go do it now. I got to take care of this. because I got to get so-and-so before they get out of the parking lot. The things like that happen all the time. Well, now, if every time you show up in line, I walk off, there's a problem. <laughs> Hello? Maybe I don't like you. you know, maybe, maybe I don't like you. Well, if, if that were the case, if I didn't like you, and every time you came through the line, I just, I looked past you and started shake talking to somebody else and said, don't bother coming back or something. Well, I can understand that eventually, you know, although you're willing to believe the best of me, you probably figured out I don't like you. Okay? So we're not talking about those extremes. What we're talking about is the subtleties of Satan trying to drive a wedge into people in the congregation through race, through cat fights, through pit bull fights. Hello. Y'all know what a cat fight is, don't you? Yeah. And we're not talking about kitty cats either. I'm talking about you women. Anyway. Oh, now he's got bad at the girls. We have to learn to allow Zoe to dominate us. The evidence of that Zoe is walking in love. And I'm talking about biblical love. Um, you know, I, I, I think of the people um, who build scenarios in their heads and wait until it's past the point of no return to come tell you that they're upset with you. Because a lot of times if they come early, we could have said, well, that's just not true. Now, I've had that happen, and they still believed it. They refused to not, they refused not to believe me and believe the, 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 the imaginations they were having. But wait until, you know, what's going on? Well, we got a problem. How do we have a problem? Well, I'm leaving. What? You know, well, <clears throat> you can have, you now listen, people get in the church, and that's pastor of the sheep, but what about people in the church? 
all of a sudden you've been you've been having dinner with people and going out and y'all hang out and fellowship. All of a sudden they won't have they, they ain't got time for you. They won't answer your calls. They won't answer your text messages. They won't answer your emails. When you come to the door, you see them scurrying around and, and closing the blinds and won't come to the door. There's a problem. Because they got offended about something you said or did. And won't have any fellowship with you. And when you come to church, they see you. They come late and leave early. I love that one. You know when something's going on when they come late and leave early. Something's up. Now I said that, no, I ain't coming late and leaving early anymore. Hello? No, love, we have to, you know, self, if love is the evidence as always, selfishness is the evidence of the lack of it. And let me tell you something, offense is nothing but selfishness. I have a right to be heard on this matter. I have a right to be treated a certain way. I have a right, da da da. That's selfishness. If you walk in love, you're walking in Zoe. And be obedient to God. Always do what the Bible says. I, I don't have to quit. I got way off. But apparently I need to go along those lines um, because things are um, coming your way. That, that, that stuff will try to get in and just, just mess up a church, mess up people's lives, mess up relationships. You know, all because, you know, people get offended and they want to be, they want to be justified. I'm going to tell you something. You've already been justified by Jesus Christ. You don't have to be justified in a, in a uh, an argument or a discrepancy or a situation. As you stand before God, you've been justified. And if the other person was wrong, let him deal with it. He can deal with it a whole lot better than you.